On today's show, we break down a pretty wild Monday night football matchup. Justin Fields, hey, looked all right. And the waiver wire, man, it is tough in the streets. Slim pickings, but we help you. We get our best options that you can find to add to your team to spice it up, strengthen it. Subscribe to this channel and enjoy the video. If you're looking for a special gift for someone this holiday season, something truly unique and personal, we got a great idea for you. At paintyourlife.com, you can have an original painting by a world-class artist done by hand from any photo at an affordable price. Yes, a professional hand-painted portrait created from any photo at a truly affordable price. Uh, you send in any picture. Maybe it's yourself. Maybe it's your kids, a family member. I got one of my dog, and it's awesome. Yeah, just the dog? Yes. See, I, I did one with the dog and the boy. Oh no! Because the boy and the dog, they're they're close. Yeah, they're, but but yeah, but I just I got a painting of my most the, my most treasured family. Member. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Mike and I we we've we've done this, but there are really unique. You know, you look for unique gifts around Christmas time, something special. And at paintyourlife.com, there is no risk. If you don't love the final painting, you get a full refund, guaranteed. Right now, as a limited time offer, get twenty percent off your painting. That's right, 20% off and free shipping. To get this special offer, text the word FOOTBALL to 64000. That's FOOTBALL to 64000. Text FOOTBALL to 64000. Paint your life. Celebrate the moments that matter most. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, November 9th, the Fantasy Footballers welcoming you into another episode of the podcast. Welcome in. I mean, I guess, thank you. I was, I got your back, Andy. Welcome in, everybody. Oh, we're not doing that? No, 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 we are. Oh, I mean, now oh. now we've all done it, and it's done. We did it. I think this is the most welcome our listeners have ever felt. <clears throat> I hope so. Triple welcomed. More welcoming than the waiver wire this week. Oh, gross. And that word no longer makes sense to me. Welcome. Oh, because you've said it too many times? Too many times. Yeah. We, Welcome uh, into the show, Foot Clan. No! Oh, <laughs> the Quattro. <laughs> Welcome, Foot Clan. Yeah, there All we go. All right. Yeah, that's enough. Way to, way to beat a dead horse there, Owl. <laughs> Owl. Oh, good. You guys were pausing and looking at me. I felt obligated. <laughs> oh, 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 too I was much, Owl. I would never. I didn't look at you. No one to quit. I'll see myself out. <laughs> um, I can't believe you're still here. I mean. Didn't you, and we fired this guy so after the whole many times. after the Green Bay thing? Yeah, oh. then, he, then he dunked on us, yeah. uh, dumped on us more yeah. like um, dunk a dump. We had a <laughs> Monday night football game, and I had a unique experience, and we'll reflect on this game for a moment. Some takeaways: We have waivers on the show today. We have where there's smoke, there's fire. Lots to talk about. Lots to get you ready for Week Ten coming up. How are we in Week Ten? I mean, this is it's got to be better than Week Nine. Time travel. Um, yeah, I know. The the Bears should have won the game just to fulfill the Week 9 prophecy. Yeah, but the uh, the refs made sure that that didn't happen. Well, that that's what I was going to say. It was funny because I, um, you know, I'm, I'm a young, hip guy. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, extremely. And so I, I was at a concert last night. Oh. And um, I didn't know Creed was in town. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Um, yeah, they're, they're going, to, they're touring again. They're back. Yeah. So anyway. But I'm I look, I'm committed to the to my to my craft. Yes. And so I watched the whole football game. But I watched it without any sound. So I had no commentary. Oh. I it, which was unique, right? Like the uh -huh. sound the sound's off. I've got it on it's on dim. Uh, a buddy of mine were watching it. This is on a on a phone, right? This is on a phone in the middle of a concert. Nice. Um, and uh, which by the way, way too loud. I'm very old. Um <laughs> Well, Hootie knows how to party. Oh, so. <laughs> it, it, it was Hootie Open for Creed. That was the concert. Thank you. Sweet mercy. Um, but I didn't have any commentary. You know, I didn't hear the announcers. I didn't hear. So I had just my assumptions about what took place, which were, one, the refs seemed to have it out for one team. Yeah. Okay. 
And this was even before that ridiculous taunting call that I assumed the commentary was like, that's a ridiculous taunting call. So it seemed like the refs had it out for the Bears. Lots of ridiculous calls. And then, correct me if I'm wrong, but that timeout by Matt Nagy, what was that? Uh, the trash at the very end of the game? It seemed like you could have used it to come back yes. and win the game. That was the So you could throw to the middle of the field one time. It was the ultimate budget magician move of, oh. That was to ice I'm, him, I'm right? I'm going to ice him. Oh, my not, gosh. Not factoring in that uh, that's just a bunch of hocus pocus and you have enough time that with a single timeout, you have a, a puncher's chance to go down and kick your own field goal. Mm -hmm. and, and instead, he self-sabotaged the entire team. Well, sometimes people are idiots, and that <laughs> would be one such example. Um, you saw Tomlin, uh, Tomlin had a timeout left and did not ice the kicker. It, can we talk for a second about that last kick? How the, the, the first... Was Angle. Yes. I, I mean yes. that that thing hit the crossbar. Yeah, I was I was with the the, the viewers that saw it be just short. It was so short. It was and apparently short. it was just an optical illusion. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get it anywhere near Which, the goalpost. Again, uh, look, it was straight. I I may pile on to Matt Nagy from time to time. Uh, you dressed up as him for Halloween. Without no, that wasn't me. That was him. He was here. You have to know your personnel. You have to know if your kicker has the leg to even physically make that kick. And one timeout would have won him the game. Yeah, well, the have, answer to that, but I'm saying, how do you, you not throw the one hundred percent? How do you not throw the hail mary. mary? Yes, your percentage of hitting the hail mary, I understand. It's like whatever one to two percent. But your if your kicker can't physically make it, then the percentage chance that they make it is in fact zero. Yeah, his career long was 55, and they're like, well, uh, watch this. Ooh. We can... <laughs> was we... there a wind? Uh, <laughs> was he hoping for a gust? It was a, <laughs> it's a difficult uh, stadium to kick in as well. Um, obviously, the the very late penalty, the the egregious, oh, the trash? awful, yeah. trash, taunting? Um, taunting penalty. This Which... taunting stuff reminds me of when they banned celebrating in the end zone yeah. for multiple yeah, years. Yeah, no one asked for this, NFL. Nobody. And then, wh who's going to flag the ref? Because that was some that was some taunting, taunting he on did the taunting? on the flag toss. Yeah, and we'll get to the actual game, but the final thing I'll say about it is, the ref was asked, did the bump have anything to do with it? Because if you watch the replay, the, the player is trying to get around. The referee steps back into him and then immediately throws the flag. The ref says that had absolutely nothing to do with the taunting call. He's saying what he saw was the player uh, staring at the end of the, the opposition's bench, except when you Zapruder film this thing, he's reaching for his flag before he the player even makes it around him where the ref can't see what a, a supposed taunt has taken place. It was unbelievably egregious and disgusting. And that poor guy who was just activated had made like perhaps the play of his career. Mm -hmm. And now everyone on the side is mad at him for something he didn't even do. Yeah, it was, it was ridiculous. Justin Fields, in my opinion, best game he's played. Okay. I was going to ask, um, like, where are you after? Was that, was that enough for you? Yes. Where there's it's like, hope there. Yeah. Okay. There's that, hope because there, there's hope as long as he doesn't get multiple years of Nagy. To destroy him like Sam Darnold. Right. He needs to get, Nagy needs to go, but Justin Fields last night was it was a redeeming performance, making good plays down the field. You know the throw to Allen Robinson was a good throw. I mean he missed a lot of throws too. Sure. I'm gonna, he, I'm, yes. But the the throw to Mooney's the best throw he's ever made in in the NFL thus far. Rolling left, crossed his body, pinpoint accuracy in the corner of the end zone. Um, this was this was a really impressive performance by Justin Fields. David Montgomery, clearly the lead back alone. Yep, mm -hmm. it went fully back. Jason, you were 100% correct. It went fully back to David Montgomery. And uh, you had, you know, it, he looked good. I mean, David Montgomery looked good. And oh, yeah, it's, ran yeah. for 4.8 a carry on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, and so I think you have confidence going forward. Obviously, the, the Chicago Bears are on bye now. Um, so it'll be in one more week. Until um, you get to really enjoy David. Do you drop Montgomery. Chase Claypool? Uh, I think you... To move forward towards the end of the year. 
Uh, he's not like one of those players that you that you have to drop. It's he will never do anything again. And looking at the waiver wire, we'll go into it. I can't imagine any of these names that we're going to bring up on today's show. I'd rather have over Claypool, but I understand that it is like he just he keeps getting hurt. Big Ben <laughs> looks. Oh just, my goodness! He looks so bad. The single play, <laughs> the play that he completed the long bomb at the end to uh, James Washington. I have never seen a worse throw. He had four seconds to cock lock and rip that thing he does the two-step jump javelin throw to go oh, watch how far i can throw this and he underthrew the ball by <laughs> 10 yards and i don't think he was going to james washington i think he was going to deontay johnson and just can't throw the ball far and then james washington runs back dives for the ball and catches it it's like when you throw a frisbee up in the air and it just happens to coast and then start start somehow coming back to you the the Mental picture I have of the Steelers right now, it's like the it's like the car, it's that's got a bunch of broken parts, and every week is like getting one more mile further down the road before it breaks down. It's like you just survive. It's like the car's on empty, it's below E, but you got another mile on the freeway, and you're just waiting for the shoe to drop. Well, sometimes you put that like enhancer in the gas tank, mm. and that's that's the Friar Muth baby. I was gonna say let's. Oh, we, oh, yeah. Let's get to the important part of this Luth. game. Oh, man. He got so loose. Oh. On prime time. Yeah, baby. The number one best rookie tight end <laughs> dominating out here. Double touchdowns. You love to see it. Yeah, I mean, great plays. He's, yeah, he's a solid player. Six targets, five for 43 with, with two scores here. And he was loose. So loose. Loose. <laughs> it's really great when stuff like this happens. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> And uh, we, the Twitter was just filled. Oh, yeah. There was so much joy in the world. Yeah. I'm for, for a moment in time, everyone was happy. That the stadium didn't, in unison, say, Muth is loose. Did you say in unison? <laughs> well, they're that's, sleepy. That's a, that's they're... a new audio oh, okay. processing. Right. Uh, let's move on. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Presented by Traeger Grills. Carson Wentz, three straight top 12 weeks, four Holy. out of the last five. Number five overall finish against the Jets. Um, he has been taking shots downfield, and he's been avoiding interceptions for the most part other than the whirling end zone <laughs> mm -hmm. left-handed. I mean, right-handed interceptions are down. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They So he's, he's playing well despite having you know Paris Campbell go out and having – um, no T.Y. Hilton for the most part. So, smoke fire is Carson Wentz a, a viable fantasy option moving forward? He's the quarterback five over the last five weeks. So I I know where I stand on um this question, and I believe. <laughs> Why don't you tell us where you stand? I think that he is what we thought he was, which is a streaming quarterback. I don't believe he is going to dominate difficult matchups. The last couple of weeks, while he's been great, was the New York Jets and the Tennessee Titans and the 49ers, who have not been very good themselves. Now they get Jacksonville this week, so yeah, baby. I mean, is it fire? Absolutely in the right matchup. Well, um, what about the – this is the Jacksonville Jaguars that shut out? Oh, the – Josh Allen? Well, uh, yeah, shut that, down, not out. They shut him out. <laughs> they did yes, shut him out. Yes. No touchdowns. Okay, yeah, I got, yeah. Yes, yes, okay. I see um, what you're saying. Yeah, so it's one of those things where I want to say this is smoke, not fire. However, the schedule coming up for him. Buffalo in two weeks. That's not good. But the next month, that's the only bad game. He's got Jacksonville. He's got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who you could throw on and, and the Houston Texans. So over the next month, he's going to be on fire. And um, so that's where I say I, I know how I feel about Carson Wentz. Uh, but I, I feel like what you would call that is s smoke, right? Because I think it's matchup based, not it's Carson Wentz. It's, Wins it's real hot smoke, though. Okay. Let's at least let's put a temperature to the smoke. He is not plug and play. This isn't you. You found it. You found the streaming quarterback that has turned into your locked and loaded starter. He will service you well over the next couple of weeks. Except you can't play him against Buffalo. But you need to uh, still be preparing for the playoffs. 
I, I think Mike summed it up well. He's not... Fire would mean that he's automatically in your lineup. I think we all thought you could probably stream Carson Wentz on the right matchup. Maybe now you have more confidence in doing that. Um, but and he's and I mean he's got the breakout wide receiver of all time. Oh the I don't oh, have any oh, city. Oh baby, we built this city. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, so that that's do, 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 do. that's hot smoke, right? <laughs> yeah, that's hot smoke. That's two twenty five. Uh, number two is Kenyon Drake. Um, Kenyon Drake has been in the top 13 at the running back position for three straight weeks. Uh, 9, 11, and 13. He's been double digits fantasy-wise. Eight targets, six for 70, 45% of snaps, 17% of the team's targets. They lost Henry Ruggs. Uh, he's being targeted on 28% of his routes. This is kind of... The, the, the reason that I'm interested here is because... Their car is like a it's like a really focused on what the play is. Mm. And if it's if it's Darren Waller, he's getting Darren Waller's getting the target. Mm -hmm. And if 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 Kenyon Drake's running her out, he's he's getting the ball. And that's where the value is. But how how do you look at three consecutive weeks, all three weeks without John Gruden? All three weeks where where Kenyon Drake, the free agent pickup, is relevant, but all three weeks where Josh Jacobs gets Gets knocked around a little bit. Yeah, it's looking at what he, you know, watching him on the field, okay, but then looking at the actual analytics and the statistics of what he has done, it is, it, it it's not sticky. Like, I, I cannot possibly believe that this is sticky for Kenyon Drake. You didn't believe it last week? I, I No, I did not because 39% of the snaps, and he got those snaps because Josh Jacobs left the game. Now... 45% of the snaps this week, and that's because Josh Jacobs left the that's game. That's not only because Josh Jacobs left the game. It's the majority of it. it it's it's about effectiveness, right? I mean, if we're going to talk snap counts, you know, Jordan Howard went out there with 17% this past sure. week and was extremely effective. You know that passing targets make you effective. Yes. It, so I just think it's – he is a play – he is a flex shot sure, on he, a weekly basis. His, he is a flex shot, but his – floor is two points like he can absolutely destroy you I would agree that his floor is low um, because he's not the primary guy uh, Jalen Richard this last week was down to seven percent snap I'm gonna I'm gonna buy into this one um, I, I with, with what that what that means is not that he is you know a top 24 back going forward but that he is a guy that you can plug in your flex and get enough targets and a few carries because he's looked good on the field. That's that's the other side of it. You talk about he has the the efficiency or how crazy he's been with such little snaps and you know the the opportunities have not been plentiful and he's just done a lot with them. But that's part of it, right? He looks good. He looks fresh. He's um, the running back thirty on the year, so RB three. Yeah, and I and I think that that's I'm going to buy that. I think that he is an RB three going forward. At the beginning of the season, it seemed like he was completely 100% unusable. Um, you know, he's he's going to be not involved enough. Um, we made fun of how much money they spent to bring him in and not utilize him. But I believe in him. I think the coaching change and uh, his utilization ticking up will stick. And it, you look at, you know, Josh Jacobs. What if he goes out? I mean, he goes out oh, all the time. Kenyon Drake so what, should be rostered. So what if he really goes out? Yes. Kenyon Drake has a real chance of being valuable for your fantasy team. Um, and when the when they sat down and they said, hey, we don't have Henry Ruggs, we're certainly not going to throw to Brian Edwards. He's a bum. Let's go to Kenyon Drake. They, yes, they Let's, throw to Waller, Renfro, and the Drake. running back. Yeah. Uh, that was where there's smoke, there's fire, presented by Traeger Grills. Traditions are better with Traeger. I can tell you right here, right now, Thanksgiving. Yes. There's a 12-pound brisket happening. Mm. I mean, it's, it's happening. I Beef. made ribs brisket. last night on my Traeger. I believe you. Mm. <laughs> this Thanksgiving, add wood-fired <laughs> flavor to your feast with the Traeger Grill. Go to Traeger.com slash footballers. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Matthew Stafford sprained his ankle. He'll be good to go, according to Sean McVay. Okay. Russell Wilson 
to return from injured reserve on Monday. He's back. Um, Chris Carson will be on the field Wednesday for practice. Uh, they are taking it one day at a time, which is really the only way any of us can take anything. That's how you take your life, man. That is. Uh, Dawson Knox will resume practicing. He could be back. I hope this is one of the reasons why the offense has slowed down. I, you know, we, we talked about the different defenses that they're facing, but they have been missing Dawson Knox, who was really involved early in the year. Logan Thomas's practice window expected to open this week. He could be back soon. I expect him to be back this week. I want to circle back to the Seahawks real quick. Uh, we will find out today where Odell Beckham Jr. lands, most likely, if he's claimed. If not, then maybe you have a time of negotiation. But I mentioned it yesterday that I thought Seattle was kind of the team that he would go to. They did not shut that down. I mean, there's been several teams shutting it down, and Pete Carroll's like, maybe, and then Russell Wilson wants him. Yeah, it makes no sense to me, but uh, oh. there have certainly been reports to echo your belief. So, I mean, that's a cool thing. We're going to find out here soon. Um, Michael Gallup expected to play in Week 10. We thought he might be back last week. He wasn't. T.Y. Hilton is in the concussion protocol. Uh, Corey Davis expected to be back in Week 10 against the Bills. We'll talk about Elijah Moore, the one, mm. the big explosion week, and whether there's confidence moving forward in the waiver. Part well, of the I show. mean, that, that's going to depend on who their quarterback is. Is it Zach Wilson? Um, there, there's a lot to talk about yeah. with the Jets. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, Royce Freeman waived by the Panthers. So, yeah, which is that's a confidence in the health of Christian McCaffrey and a confidence in Amir Abdullah. Yeah. Amir Abdullah's looked Amir pretty Abdullah's good. Amir Abdullah's doing some work as the backup over there. He's, He's been, better than Royce Freeman. Like, Chuba has been very serviceable, and then Royce Freeman has just been awful. So, uh, Amir Abdullah. So, you've got McCaffrey, but then you have Chuba Dula as the backup. Oh, 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 Chuba Dula. Mm. Ablongada. I, I looked over, and I could see. I saw the brain. The, the cocks were working overtime. <laughs> just <laughs> try, desperately trying to piece together that puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man i was out late um don't forget to check out the sleeper app the leader in breaking news alerts download the app subscribe to the breaking alerts channel and before we get to the main meat on the waiver wire, Chuba Dula, <laughs> um we want to thank head and shoulders for sponsoring today's episode head and shoulders scalp shield technology is never not working to give you up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. We've been bringing our Never Not Working segment every Thursday. Just outstanding work Jason, happening on those segments. I got to admit, one one day I woke up, Okay, I thought about not working. Oh, I thought about and it. And then you said, never. And I said, well, I will never not work. You know who else doesn't? stop working is good <laughs> doesn't never not work <laughs> doesn't never not work is good friend of the show pro football hall of famer troy palomalu he has teamed up with head and shoulders and the freelancing website fiverr.com uh, and he is literally this is not a joke he is right now offering up his services and will be available to hire that's right the foot clan you can hire Troy Palomalu. He's fulfilling real gigs. He's ready to assist you on, you, you want uh, hair care, tips and tricks, unboxing videos, voiceover services. He'll develop an epic soundtrack for you. And of course, the best one, he can even design a customized tattoo just for you. And you when you're telling the story on that I've one. I've been wanting a Palomalu tattoo. Be like, yeah, you know who designed this? Yeah. My good friend, Troy Palomalu. He's never not working. This is a rare opportunity to work with a true NFL legend. Uh, but it's for a limited time, and he's only taking a limited number of requests. So act fast, Foot Clan. You can check out Troy's profile at Fiverr.com slash Troy Palomalu. That's Fiverr with two R's. Again, the site is Fiverr.com slash Troy Palomalu. Very cool opportunity. So check it out and hire Troy today. Foot Clan, this fall, as you get back into the swing of things, Bespoke Post is here with a new seasonal lineup of must-have box of awesome collections. Bespoke Post partners with small businesses and emerging brands to bring you the most unique goods every month. I got a box, a a box of awesome. Yes. They were they were not joking. This thing came with a uh, with a super dope hatchet and a knife that can do everything. I got like, a machete that is pretty much just a sword. <laughs> it's awesome, <laughs> and like and and it came with a bird call in mind. It's just like these are really interesting uh, tools and pieces. It's like. I would, you know, there's never, awesome stuff. I would never really think that 
to, to go get this and then but bespoke post man to get that box of awesome to get started you take the quiz at boxofawesome.com your answers will help you pick the or help them pick the right box of awesome for you they release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories it's free to sign up you can skip a month cancel whenever you want each box is only 45 bucks but comes with $70 worth of gear inside and you're helping small businesses. 90% of everything that comes in your box of awesome is from a small and up and coming brand. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code FOOTBALLERS at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code FOOTBALLERS for 20% off your first box. Put me in, coach. All right, we welcome back the Buccaneers, Lions, Seahawks, and the Washington football team from the bye week. Welcome. And uh, we say goodbye to the Bears, the Bengals, the Giants, and the Texans. Okay, see you later. See you. Have a, have a nice break. All right, let's talk about wide receiver waiver pickups. There are some. Some. <laughs> This, this is, I mean, this is a tough week. This is as shallow a week uh, across all positions as I can remember. Tight end is okay, but if you need a wide receiver, you need a running back. So we're let, we're gonna dive deep. Let me ask you about. Obviously, you have to cut somebody to sign somebody. So let me ask you about some cut candidates at the wide receiver position, especially one that I'm wrestling with. Um, Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones is Ooh. he's a good. NFL wide receiver yes, in a is. system that may not be at a minimum predictable mm -hmm. as to when he will make a difference. I mean, he had he had a play in this game, if you saw it, the Buffalo game, where he broke free. Oh, he was wide open? Broke free yep. down the sideline. And if the ball's in his hands, we're not talking about him today. We, he, he scores a 55-yard touchdown. And I think there's a huge difference between what Trevor Lawrence can do against those Buffalo Bills in seeing the wide receiver that happens to get open um, and what he's going to be able to do against the Indianapolis Colts, who is the matchup this coming week. I, I would not cut Marvin Jones because I think this is one of those weeks you'll be able to actually play him you know, similar to the Carson Wentz narrative, I think uh, you've got to look at the streaming opportunity. We we talked about this on the Never Not Working segment. The the fact that w the biggest problem for Marvin Jones is actually Trevor Lawrence. Marvin's fine, but Trevor it's Lawrence isn't good enough. Scheme. And um, I so think you wouldn't drop him to pick up a Brandon Ayuk. If somehow Ayuk is out there, then yes, I will answer for Jason. Yes, you would do that. Thank but, you, Mike. But Brandon Ayuk is highly rostered. I mean, in in Marvin Jones' last five games. He does have a week six finish where he was uh, the number seven wide receiver. But other than that, he has been outside of the top 50 for uh, for four of those five games. It's been a brutal stretch. Okay, uh, Julio, are we done? I am not done with I Julio. am not done. Uh, we, we, I don't think we got a ton of answers from the Tennessee Titans versus the Rams game because it was – They were out they, ahead. They had the pick six. It was just – it was a strange game that – the Titans aren't winning all of their games with their defense like that. That's just that was they that team rose to that particular occasion. And like and what I mean was of we don't know what they're going to do. We still don't completely know what the running back situation is going to be. We don't know what the the offense is going to turn into. So no, I'm not going to cut Julio Jones cuz he's still good. And I yeah, and I would start Julio over Marvin Jones because of the quarterback situation and the confidence there. What about one more name? Cortland Sutton. Woof, man! I mean, he—you he, probably don't drop Corlin Sutton right after a. Uh, if Corlin Sutton were on the, act. if Corlin Sutton was on the waiver wire, I would pick him up. He is a talented player. Obviously, we've got the splits of when when he is playing with Jerry Judy so far in very, very, very limited sample. Um, it has been terrible, not good. Um, that being said, Corlin Sutton's a talented wide receiver. Um, you know, Tim Patrick got the deep bombs this last week. I would not move on from Sutton. In the game script, right? 30 to nothing in this game. Mm -hmm. A lot of the running backs. All right, likely rostered waiver pickups. You can check on them. You know, the reason Brandon Ayuk's roster percentage is this high is because he was drafted. 72%, but Brandon Ayuk is somebody that you can look at. Played 93% of snaps. I am a little bit, you know, look, I, I kind of, I've had fun with this this past week because I picked him up. I played him. This was the week that I felt confident that he would get some action. I'm not going to be – this is not an auto start player. Sure. This is a 
you can take your shot with him. But there are players that I like. I'm probably going to stare down the Ayuk Devontae Smith. I'm going to take Devontae Smith. I'm going to take the number one in the offense this week. I'm not going to to go to a situation where I know the 49ers can have success without Brandon Ayuk. Right. You know, and, and it's in a the tough, passing game. Tough matchup this week against the Los Angeles Rams for Ayuk, but he does the the schedule does open up after that. Um, if I could trade certainly him. be, I don't think you can. But if you could trade Brandon Ayuk, sure. Uh, he's probably rostered, but I would I would certainly pick him up. Hunter Renfro and Christian Kirk are both heavily rostered as well, but options you could look at. Kirk is going to be, you know, we don't know if Hopkins is back. He's day to day. We don't know if Green is back. He's on the COVID list. But we do know that Chase Edmonds is out with a high ankle sprain, yes. and you could see Christian Kirk getting, you know, two extra targets a game there you go. Uh, short across the field. Um, I like Christian Kirk quite a bit. And, um, Let's move to some more available options. You know, Donovan Peoples-Jones is... He's interesting. He's interesting uh, in a kind of like, I don't know, like a Marquez Valdez-Scantling plus version. Like, he makes big plays. Mm -hmm. And you know the team has moved on from Odell. So your downfield threat is Donovan Peoples-Jones. Yes. So... It's tough. Like, list last week, he had a good week he was the wide receiver 10 because he caught a long bomb touchdown but he only had three total targets so that's what you're talking about it's, it's hard to rely on him but I like people's Jones he's probably my number one pickup because really looking back I think part of the reason they were able to move on from Odell Beckham is Donovan people's Jones remember he dominated in the preseason they kind of went away from him um but this is three games in a row yes. where he's had over 70 yards I mean that's that's outstanding. And you have to look at the script of that particular game where, yeah, it was three targets, but that was 16% of the targets because the Cleveland Browns whooped the Cincinnati Bengals, it, and it won't always be that. Yeah, I mean, if you need safety, Hunter Renfro is your guy. If you need boom, Donovan Peoples-Jones has that chance for you. He has as many 55-yard <laughs> touchdowns <laughs> in his career as Devontae Adams. Uh, so he's he's on the up and up. Rashad Bateman, yeah, I you need to get Rashad Bateman if he's out there on the waiver wire. There's a an unseen ceiling there with the way this team is throwing the football. Bateman was limited, injured coming into the game, still made his contribution. Felt eight targets, five for fifty two, had an end zone target that didn't work out. I'm very interested in him against Miami this week. I I am interested in him as well. He does have a Sammy Watkins factor that we haven't seen. Correct. That w What the team will do when both of these players are healthy. But what we do know is that in his first three games, he's been very good for a rookie in his first three. Yeah. He's been targeted and done well with them. So he's certainly someone. First rounder. That sh yes, first round pick this year. The offense is clicking. Lamar Jackson's throwing it well. So Rashad Bateman would be my number two pickup this week. A lot of people want to talk about Elijah Moore. Uh, eight targets last week, seven for 84 and two touchdowns. Uh, to me... And I know you guys are going to have a different opinion. To me, that's a fool's gold performance that I would not invest a lot of fab in. Oh, I don't, I don't, dis actually, I don't disagree. Um, Buffalo this week, Corey Davis is coming back, and just at a minimum, tumult and unknown at the quarterback position, not just this week, but moving forward, right? Like when Zach Wilson's healthy, yeah. you know, Mike White coming off an injury, the Buffalo Bills coming off of a loss to the Jacksonville Jaguars and good teams. They respond, you know, it, it was one of the reasons I liked Minnesota. If you remember on the show last week, coming off of a bad loss, they respond. Buffalo's going to with a loss. You mean? Yeah, but they, they were up the whole game. Yes, I'm just were. saying they competed. I said, I think they're going to be competitive okay. in that game. Um, but Elijah Moore, as talented as he is, you're talking about trying to pick the week with him. And I'm just, I, I'm not investing fab. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I would put him behind Rashad Bateman. These are two talented rookie wide receivers where you say the 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 ceiling is unrealized here there is potential for either one or both of these players to have an outstanding rest of season one is tied to Lamar Jackson a, a former you know and possibly current NFL MVP and the other is probably tied to Zach Wilson over the course of the the season which is just un, unusable so certainly this could be fool's gold um that being said he is very much on my list of people I am you know, pr prioritizing to pick up because he has uh, a lot of electricity on the field. Three games in a row with at least six targets. 
and there's a chance that Zach Wilson is not the quarterback, in which case, great. Yeah, I thought I saw a report yesterday that Mike White's good to go. Yeah, and then so he's probably going to start. He'll probably start this week. I would imagine they will go back to Zach Wilson in the following week. Jason, uh, so Peoples-Jones, you, you said he's your top pickup of the week? Yes, so where, how do wide you, receiver. Or, yeah, wide receiver. How do you rank him against Van Jefferson uh, from the Los Angeles Rams, who is – it's a similar – type of a situation a similar role uh where it's he's not the number one guy he's the vertical threat but much better quarterback much better offense and, yeah. and more pass happy yeah I mean I I think that they're not very far apart it's I don't see Donovan Peoples Jones okay. as someone that I'm burning a if you have the number one waiver priority he is my first wide receiver but I'm not burning it on a Donovan Peoples Jones because the difference between him and Vance Jefferson is is very little um you know, I, I think Donovan Peoples-Jones is higher in the pecking order on a worse offense. So take whatever you prefer. Russell Gage, uh, eight targets, seven for 84, two touchdowns. Uh, uh, two, the two touchdowns was I'm Zacchaeus. sorry, sorry, seven for six. Yeah, I, I was looking at the seven for 84 for Elijah Moore, not the seven for 64 right, for Gage. Go. But eight targets, 81% of snaps. I believe Matt Ryan is the number one rated quarterback on pro football focus over the last handful of weeks. Yes. Dallas coming up feels like maybe. he's going to be involved, but it, he does this. He does the yeah, ping see, pong thing. That's why it's a maybe. The, it. We're going to be uh, sharing our streaming quarterback uh, options of the week, and I was looking at Matt Ryan because he's been playing outstanding. Uh, the Dallas matchup is pretty good for a s streaming option. I just couldn't do it because it's mm. like you just wait for it to not look as good as it's looked for the last month, especially with no Calvin Ridley. Um, if I can't rely on Matt Ryan, I can't rely on Russell Gage. This is certainly a player you could pick up, take your shot at getting a decent game. If you have a bye week or an injury problem and you have to have someone start, you could throw him in there, but I'm not going to rely on him and bank on him. The, he can have a decent game. Obviously we know he can goose. He did that two weeks ago, but I don't see an outcome where he levels up and is great going forward the way that with these uh, rookies or with Donovan Peoples Jones' new situation, um, you know, could could come to fruition. People want me to bring up Deshaun Jackson. Do I have to do that? Well, you just did. So yes, super deep leagues. Sure. Yeah, I mean, Djax is coming into the Henry Ruggs role. He signed there because, um, you know, obviously he wanted to be utilized. I think he's going to have a decent game, but you can't a decent get... game. Yeah. This week? Um, no, this season. Like, yeah, well, he'll have one. Oh, just singular. Yeah, I think yeah, I look have... back, he hasn't had two two games that were relevant in consecutive order in four years. Yeah, I mean, he's... That that's, sounds like Deshaun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's a DFS uh, dart throw for sure because he's going to have a bomb touchdown uh, by the end of the season, but uh, to rely on him is very difficult. Let's look at the very, very difficult running back position unless there's another wide receiver you want to mention i mean tim patrick you can always bring up yeah fireball um, uh and i think uh, i mean these are lower level wide receivers all of them but i i do think michael gallup is worth a stash as like i prefer van jefferson i prefer people's jones but if you want to put like the zero dollar bid so who's uh, your number one since jason brought up donovan people's jones for me it would be van jefferson still me it's bateman by far that's okay, one of yeah, most interesting. And I don't blame you on that. Uh, Khalil Herbert, are you cutting him now? Is it time to just like he be is, mature about the situation and just? Uh, I, he's an he's a high value insurance running back. So it's like, would you drop Alexander Madison? Yeah, one hundred percent. Unless I had, if I had Delvin Cook, I would think about not doing that. Yeah, those guys are guys that should be rostered in general, but they're not necessary. Also, you know, like I've got uh, Samaj P. Ryan, um, and he's in this situation where they're on by. So like, you're not going to get, an, you know, I mean, I, obviously an injury can happen in practice, but holding Herbert through the bye doesn't seem smart. It doesn't seem like it's the best utilization of your bench spots. I would rather drop him and pick up, you know, Rashad Bateman if he's available on waivers in the hopes that he breaks out versus hoping that when the Bears get back, that David Montgomery gets injured. Yeah, I'd rather pick up Kenyon Drake if sure. I can pick up Kenyon Drake and have him on my roster than yeah, Herbert. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, Mike Davis, it's not going to happen. It's <laughs> not going to happen. I would, I would definitely cut Mike Davis. He is, uh, he is. I, 
He's not explosive. It's not like one week he's going to break off a 75-yard touchdown. What could happen? Nothing. He can fall into the end zone twice. R right. Like That's Falling it. into the end zone fantasy-wise, he's okay. But like, there's nothing that could happen for the Falcons, for no. an injury, for a, anything that could make him relevant. He's not going to get faster. How? He's not going to get younger. It, it is mind-bottling. Because is that is that puts a, your it's well, that's different than boggling. Mm -hmm. That's a Will Ferrell thing. Uh, how does a running back through nine weeks average fourteen and a half opportunities per game, and they are the running back thirty nine? He, because he sucks it. I mean, he's not good. <laughs> yeah, it's so. I mean, he's not a good running so back. So bizarre. I mean, he showed that he wasn't a good running back over the back half of last year. He had a couple of good games, yeah. and then he caught up. Boston Scott, are you moving on? He had more uh, snaps than Jordan Howard. He had far less production. I don't think he – like, he's still a spot start. Jordan Howard will be, is clearly the preferred guy, at least for one week, by the Philadelphia Eagles. So, Boston can still be a spot start, but we'll, we can rank him against these other guys as we get through it. Spent the whole season talking about Jeff Wilson's return from, from the pup, and he ended up active. So, that's a good sign, right? You, 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 Trey Sermon wasn't active on mm -hmm. game day. Uh, but you saw what you've seen, which is first and second down, Elijah Mitchell. And you saw him catching third, passes this Third week. down, uh, Jamichael Hasty. Jeff Wilson did not log a snap in his first game back. So are you are you holding him and waiting another week to see what happens? Because you probably picked him up on this news. Yeah, I mean, I certainly view him as an insurance back, which means he's a stash. He's someone you can cut if you need to. But he's got value, especially considering the uh, frequency with which Elijah Mitchell and all San Francisco right. running backs get injured. So I, I would be fine holding on to him if there's not a better option. All right. Likely rostered pickups that you can think about. You know, check and see if J.D. McKissick off the bye week is still there. Mm -hmm. uh, check on Kenyon Drake, who we talked about extensively earlier. Devin Singletary's getting some targets. I don't know if those are going to go away with Dawson Knox return. Devin Singletary is very interesting. Zach Moss got hurt. Yeah, depending on Zach Moss. Zach Moss left the game. The Jets matchup. If Devin Singletary is the only running back against then, the yeah. Jets, he's going to be a smash play. Adrian Peterson, Jeremy McNichols, Deonta yeah. Foreman. We needed to have a discussion about that backfield and how we see it moving forward. I, see uh, it. I think we have different opinions. My opinion is I see this whole thing grossly. Sure. Um, I don't disagree with I that. I don't love any of them. The one player that I would certainly put at the top of the list would be Adrian Peterson just because he got the goal line opportunities. Not only did he get the touchdown, but earlier in the game they wildcatted him for an opportunity for another touchdown. I think when they get down around the goal line, it's, it's his job. Um, we have the same opinion. Okay, there you go. But I... I don't love any of them. I'm not excited. I'm not burning a ton, but Peterson would be the one to have. Yeah, I agree. And they could, you know, with another week of practice of him arriving, yeah, that could work could him change. in a little bit more. Nick Nichols did get a carry inside the five. He got. He might have been on the six for the other one because he got. It was Mick Nichols twice as they got uh, inside. They to gave the him goalie. two chances. Yeah. They did, and then they got to the two, and Peterson was the one who punched it in. Well, that was because they knew they got word. I had texted them about your fancy team. Needing, yeah, yeah. Like, if McNichols score, you you would win. I would have won, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to let him know. I appreciate that. Thank um, you. A.J. Dillon is – he's been more involved. He obviously looks good. He's not the guy, but he's averaging 5.4 yards per touch on the year. Played 38% of snaps. He's just making every single dynasty manager sad. Just that, because he's... Be, because of the, this offseason, the, the whole thing started with a Aaron Jones watch. And the like for an entire month, it felt very much like the Green Bay Packers were not going to bring Aaron Jones back. And A.J. Dillon was going to turn into... The dude. Uh, the dude. A superstar fantasy running back. And I think that's that's all that's happening is they're confirming if Jones had left, A.J. Dillon would have been in an incredible spot and at least a top 15 running back at Instead, the worst. Instead, what is happening <laughs> is he's not getting enough work to be started. <laughs> yes. But he is definitely getting enough work to destroy Aaron Jones' um, upside. So I'm not – I mean, he, he certainly should be rostered because he's 
getting work and he's a talented back on a good offense. Um, I don't want to start him, and I wish he would go away. Who's your favorite pickup from the main group of available running backs? Because it is not pretty. Um, there's Jordan Howard. He's a he's 17 for 71. Team came out. Ah, oh, we got to work him in. Um, you have Alex Collins that, you know, I think Chris Carson is probably going to play. I yeah, mean, I do. He's supposed to get back on the field um, tomorrow uh, at practice. And so if uh, if he come, if Chris Car Carson comes back, Alex Collins is, is a backup is irrelevant. Yeah, yeah Alex Collins. backup with other backups like Rashad Penny and Travis Homer. 100%. And, and I think and I this this is how bad it. I think he's still my number 1 pickup. Oh. Well, you have I mean you have a problem in in New England too because you know, you can say oh, Ramondre looked good. Well, he's looked good before this year. Mm -hmm. You can say Ramondre looked good, but he's hurt. He he and Damien Harris went out separately with head injuries, 4 minutes apart. Both to the locker room. Both didn't return. Both we need more information this, than to tell you to go pick them up. This feels like a Rocky Balboa. The the two boxers just knocked each other down. Double KO. And you're trying to see which one can get up for the next game. Because if one of them can get up and the other doesn't, you're going to have a real winner here. But we don't know. I mean. Yeah, if he were to miss. The problem is, is last time Damian Harris missed, we were tricked. Yeah. I Ramondre Stevenson looked great. 62 yards on 10 carries, involved in the receiving game, 44 receiving yards. I, I love Ramondre Stevenson. If 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 he didn't have the current injury that he left the game with, he would certainly be my number one pickup. That being said, he, I mean, it is a, an extreme risk because mm -hmm. he he could very easily just be inactive. Just Bill the, Belichick would be like, yeah, I don't need you this game. Damian Harris, 15 carries, 23 carries, 14 carries. My number one pickup is uh, he doesn't have the ceiling of Ramondre if if everything were to go right for Stevenson, uh, but it's Mark Ingram. Now that he has moved over to the Saints, he's he's seeing a good amount of work. Nine carries, very efficient, forty three yards, but also five targets, and he caught all five of them. He gets Tennessee, Philly. These are matchups that I'm I'm with you. I'm happy that I'm going to play my running back against those guys. It's this isn't a uh, you're signing Mark Ingram and you're <laughs> strutting through the streets celebrating your victory that you got Mark Ingram doing the Conor McGregor but, walk yeah, yeah oh I got Mark Ingram bro <laughs> look at me big man hey hey but uh, but he is very playable there are two ways to start a roster each week it, there's there's uh, I'm gonna shoot for the ceiling but there's also don't goose me Mark Ingram's yeah. never gonna he's leave never these gonna butt cheeks you. alone right that's that's a are you there with that one you never heard that called a goose when someone pinches you in the butt? Is it's a pinch? Is that yeah. what it, I th I thought it was something else. Hmm. I didn't know it was a pinch. Yeah. Uh, Al, that's all right. Al, you would be the authority on this. I have no idea. I've never yeah, heard I that. Yeah, I think we were all feeling Well, that's fine. I I thought goosing you was a little bit more invasive. Really? Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to goose someone is defined as to pinch the person in the buttocks. Huh. Where did you find that? Google. <laughs> also, read a book, you heathens. The, yes. Goodness and reading gracious. books would teach us all about goosing. Um, go back to school. Okay. Well, there you go. Uh, all I said is I thought it was more invasive. I know, but I just, I'm, I'm in a room of idiots. What about Brandon Bolden <laughs> and the same Patriots backfield if Ramondre Stevenson... And, if, and Harris both. Yeah, uh, sign him later in the week. Yeah, I mean, don't don't spend anything up on him. Yeah, or just yeah, or just go with the free approach and early stash and see what happens. The only other name I would be willing to bring up here would be Eno Benjamin. Yes, he should be picked up. Um, y y James Connor is the is the main guy. He's going to come in in the absence of Chase Edmonds, but I don't think they want him to be. You know, they've had a split backfield all year. And I think Eno Benjamin will have work, so he's in a great offense. It's a bad matchup this week against Carolina, so it's not someone that – if you're looking to pick someone up and play him this week, I would rather play Mark Ingram for sure. Sure. But Eno is on the list of, hey, there's an injury. He's going to have a couple-week opportunity to be part of a great offense. All right, uh, tight end options. Where are we looking this week on the waiver wire? You know, Logan Thomas is out there. He's 55% rostered. 55! Pat – Fryer Muth. Oh, is he your number one? Like, are you in? Are you in? Are you in for an every week? 
I'm in, baby. Mute, mute. I'm in, baby. Uh, look, I, ever since um, Juju Smith-Schuster got injured, Pat Fryermuth has been involved. He's seven targets, seven targets, six targets for a tight end. He's involved around the red zone. Um, I don't know that you're going to find better than that on the waiver wire. Uh, now, there's a debate between Logan Thomas and Pat Fryermuth. Like, mm -hmm. uh, f flip a coin, I think Logan Thomas um, – has a more realistic outcome of being better because he's obviously more experienced. He was great before getting injured. I think their plan was to bring him back after the bye week this week. And he doesn't it, have Eric Ebron on his team. It, and exactly. But the the question with Logan Thomas, though, ironically, you bring up Eric Ebron, is whether or not Ricky Seals Jones will continue to be utilized in the passing game in ways that he wasn't prior to Logan Thomas going down because Ricky Seals Jones has proven himself valuable to the Washington football team. But it could be a Khalil Herbert situation where it's like, thank you for your service. The main guy is back. Hit the road. And I that's what I That's how I that's project how it. I project it. They paid Logan Thomas a lot of money. So I think I would go Logan Thomas over Pat Fryermuth. I'd rather have Dan Arnold. Over both of them? No, over over uh Logan Thomas's return. So you okay. Pat Fryermuth's your number one? Yeah, I I I, t I chase it because he's a rookie and he's been great and more involved and the the ceiling goes up. But like Dan Arnold, the last four games, oh, his, yeah, he's fantastic. on 85 reception pace yeah. on that team. 17 targets over the last two weeks. Had an end zone target that didn't work out. But, I mean, fundamental to the offense in Jacksonville. And there's a reason why Marvin Jones isn't getting targets. It's because James O'Shaughnessy was, and now you have Dan Arnold there who has athleticism. I'm, I like him because you can get a week where it's yards, Get you enough points. Yes, yards plus touchdown win you the week. Hundred percent, not and just touchdown. And a great matchup. Um, you know, I, I brought that up with Marvin Jones that I, um, I think it, you know the Indianapolis Colts. It's going to be a great game for uh, Trevor Lawrence. Dan Arnold super involved. And what happens to the mail during the holiday season, guys? What is a, like? Does a postman work harder? <sighs> yes. Or do they take it easy? <laughs> Well, I mean, they, they deliver. They don't deliver on, on Christmas, though. Well, is he playing on Christmas? Well, we'll have to look into that. Oh, man. Do some deep diving. That's a tough one to research. I really hope that they did not schedule the Jaguars on Christmas. <laughs> that that's one. coal in your stocking. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> you've been naughty. You see how happy Urban Meyer was? Oh, yeah. Nine to he, six, baby. Yeah, because that was... I mean, That was a great upset. That was like a playoff it a victory. It was, it was... It was uh, the, he knew that celebration, that smile, that wasn't just the win. That was I'm not being fired today. as soon yeah, as soon today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, think about it. If Matt Nagy pulls that one out last <laughs> night, it's like getting an extension. I expect Urban Meyer to survive the season and then retire. Ooh, you know what I mean? Go, Pull a, then, you you can't fire um, me. You can't, mutually agreeable. You can't retire. No, what? like he's just not physically unable. Mm. Oh, sure, but he can quit. He he can go coach another college team. Yeah. Tyler Conklin did have seven targets. He's a desperation tight end every week. Waiver wire pickups for the defensive side of the ball. Baltimore has Miami. The Cardinals have Carolina and Sam Darnold. Oh, yeah, baby. Um, the Cardinals defense has been arguably the best in football. They're very good. Uh, Dallas against Atlanta. I don't know. No, I don't feel great about that after what happened this past week and Atlanta playing so well. I would I would agree with that. Dallas is a little dicey this week. Um, the Broncos, though, their defense has been very good, and they get Jalen Hurts. Are you are you in on that? That's uh, all right. Okay. It scares me. I mean, I, I like my defense to play somebody that doesn't have explosion potential, and I guess I give Philly the chance to explode for low. So like. The Ravens and Cardinals, that's like a 50-50 shot. Will they be there? The Broncos are uh, available in about 70%. So like, then the you... other the other low roster defense that's interesting is the Cleveland Browns against the Patriots. Do you prefer that? I mean, it's on the road. It's in Foxborough. Yeah, I was going to say, would you rather have the Browns facing the Patriots offense or the Patriots facing the Browns offense? I, oh, that's a good Because, I mean, the Patriots are at home and just put up a humongous game. I think I would go with the Patriots. Defense. Would you play the Patriots over the Ravens? No. Okay. No. I, I, I like the Ravens. And and while we do expect uh, Russell Wilson to be back this week, uh, at least worth uh, mentioning if for some reason he has a setback or something happens, uh, the Packers defense would be a good play 
if oh yeah Russ against Gino. Play. Yeah. Full stream ahead. I'll kick it off because I've what talked about him a couple. What are you doing? Because I've talked about him a couple of times already. What are you doing? I like yours much more, Mike, but you already had him claimed. Um, it's in the same game. I think this game has a lot of fantasy points. I like Trevor Lawrence this week as a streaming option um, against the Colts. The Colts have allowed the most passing touchdowns in the NFL. You're a wild They're very man. beatable in the air, and I think Trevor Lawrence has shown enough from, you know, he's got a lot of bad games. He's got a a handful of good games and I think that this is going to be a good one for him fantasy wise they're coming off the victory um playing a very beatable secondary Dan Arnold Marvin Jones they'll do enough it, it, I'm not expecting like a top five performance sure. but I think you can get 250 and two all right I'll jump in here it I like Carson Wentz I, I mean keep rolling with this train the quarterback five over the last five weeks can you just cut that out, the, the just the clip of I like Carson Wentz? Because I need that. Oh, that's uh, great. Can we get that saved? I uh, like Carson Wentz. I have uh, been rolling with Carson Wentz for a couple weeks now, and new information, man, that the team is – they are getting is he, it going. Is he playing well? He's playing okay. He's playing well <laughs> Oh, enough. that was so close. Yeah, I almost he's, got him. It was like a t therapy almost completed. He, he is – he's he's capable. And look, fantasy football is not necessarily real-life football. Uh but I like my quarterbacks to play against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, you know, Josh, Josh, Josh Allen, Allen. would stand. Uh, somebody put Derek Carr in here for me. Um, no, no. Oh, come I, on, Andy, sit I'm in not, the car. I'm not doing that. Uh, the Kansas City matchup, people want to tell me that that's good. It hasn't been that good for a few weeks. Um, no, I'll go Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, I he Getting – Jerry Judy back, uh, Judy Sutton, Patrick, potentially a shootout against Philadelphia. If Philadelphia could put some points on the board, I think you could stream Bridgewater and survive, which is what streaming quarterback can be sometimes. Sure. So we want to uh, once again thank Traeger Grills for sponsoring the show as we close things down. Traditions are just better with Traeger. Um, Thanksgiving, going to uh, kind of wag you brisket. I'm, I'm going to be smoking. You want – people to show up to your house and when they get out of their car they go what is that what is happening yeah. here i love when i'm cooking on my trigger because the whole neighborhood smells like hallelujah and you've got so much room you can cook everything from tur from turkey sides pie um you, you should talk to their marketing team yeah. smells like hallelujah mm. that's, that's that's not bad that's pretty good uh and you can i'm gonna monitor it with the wi-fi oh yeah you know, because like you got it. You got to get what is it like a? You kind of smoke it a pound, uh, an hour a pound. Is that kind of the rule with brisket? And and so I don't. I need to monitor it without going outside in the middle of the night because I got to go put it on in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. uh, this Thanksgiving, add wood fired flavor to your feast with a Traeger grill. Go to traeger.com slash footballers. And we also want to thank Pristine Auction for sponsoring today's show. Thanks, Pristine Auction. Yeah, thank you. Look, these are a couple things that are available right now. A signed David Montgomery jersey sitting at just $50. A signed DK Metcalf mini helmet sitting at just $78. Hundreds of new things up every single day. And it's hundreds of new, cool memorabilia pieces for you to go try and win. PristineAuction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS to get a $10 credit. Well... Good luck on the waiver wire, everybody. We'll be back yeah. with another episode tomorrow. Jointhefoot.com if you want to check out the community. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. <laughs>